prologos of Oedipus at Colonus at a sacred grove of trees near Athens, Oedipus, an old blind man, is being led along by his daughter Antigone. They're hoping to find a place where they can rest and take stock of their surroundings. Antigone suspects they're already on sacred ground and helps her father sit down. A stranger approaches and tells the pair they'll have to move. It's sacrilegious to be here. This is a holy place, owned by Poseidon, and dedicated to the Eumenides, or Furies, goddesses of unavenged crimes. Its name is Colonus. As a suburb of Athens, it's ruled by the king of Athens, Theseus. Oedipus replies, in that case, it's his destiny to be here. He asks the stranger to take a message to Theseus. A trifling service will garner him great reward. The stranger agrees and leaves. When the stranger is out of sight, Oedipus addresses the Eumenides, pleading that they let him live out the fate Apollo predicted for him, which is that he should end his life of suffering in a sacred sanctuary of dreadful goddesses. By staying there, he will welcome those who punish him while punishing those who drove him out of Thebes. The chorus, composed of elderly men, approaches, and Oedipus and Antigone hide in the grove to listen. The prologos sets the scene, gives some background for the audience, and introduces one or two key elements of the play's plot. At first, Oedipus and Antigone walk where they shouldn't. Because the audience is familiar with the pair's backstory, it hurts to see them face rejection the instant they arrive. Father and daughter are exhausted. They've been traveling for a long time. Can't they be allowed to rest for a little while? But when Oedipus learns that the sacred ground they're polluting is dedicated to the Eumenides, he perks up immediately. Although the Eumenides are more familiarly called the Furies, they're on his side. The slightly whiny tone he used at first is replaced by a note of authority. He refuses to depart this sacred spot. He has felt like a wanderer for so long that it must be a huge relief to know he's finally where he should be. Since Oedipus believes everything in his life is preordained, he also knows that the gods want him here. This is the beginning of the transformation that will take place over the course of the play.